go ahead and let you, Nicole, take over controls. So I'm going to stop sharing and then you go ahead and share. Okay. Oops, stop sharing. There um, this should work. Can everyone see the? Yes, supply? that did come through. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. But Thank you. I, I always struggle on Zoom as well with screen sharing, so I practice. But um, <clears throat> so hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Atkin. I am the foreclosure prevention coordinator at the Housing Bureau for Seniors, um, and I am in charge of kind of all the tax programs we're offering um, this year and beyond. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go over those today. So for my presentation, I'm gonna do a quick overview of who we are at the Housing Bureau for Seniors and what services we provide. Um, a lot of you might be familiar, but some may not be. Um, how tax preparation fits into our mission. Um, it's a great service to offer free tax programs, but there's sort of more reason behind it and what we, we utilize these tax clinics for. And then I'm gonna go into the free tax programs we're offering um, this tax season. So Housing Bureau for Seniors is a part of University of Michigan Health. Um, we fall under Community Health Services, um, which is the community program kind of branch of University of Michigan Health. There are five key, initi five key initiatives um, for community health services, and we fall under protecting the health and quality of life for our seniors. So we work to address um, the specific needs of our older adults and um, homebound residents um, to address hunger, food insecurity, and housing counseling and assistance. Um, some other programs under Community Health Services, um, Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels, Adolescent Health Initiative, uh, Regional Alliance for Healthy Schools, and there are more that I could name. Our mission, so Housing Bureau for Seniors mission is to inform and empower older adults and those who care about them with guidance and resources regarding sustainable housing in Washtenaw County and beyond. Um, our age population, we define senior as 55 and up. Um, and we, we do this through a few different programs. So we have an eviction prevention program, um, which works with older adults facing eviction, either due to non-payment or other concerns. We have our foreclosure prevention program, which works with those older adults in danger of foreclosure, either through mortgage or property taxes. We also offer housing counseling, which can help um, you know, older adults understand the affordable senior housing market in Washtenaw County. County. We have housing guides and assist with applications. Um, we also do a lot of guidance with resources. So we have um, a pretty substantial resource guide where we're able to connect seniors with different resources in the community from affordable internet to help getting someone to help change their health insurance or make some housing repairs. And then we focus a lot on outreach and education through presentations um, throughout the county um, to work towards you know, increasing access to um, affordable and safe uh, senior housing. Um, we have some new people, so I did wanna throw a slide up on who, who our team is. So our executive director is Janet Hunko. I'm the foreclosure prevention coordinator. I started in July. We have a new eviction prevention coordinator um, which is Jasmine Wynn. She started in November. Our intake coordinator is Desiree Herrick. Community education and outreach coordinator is Yvonne Cutney. And we have a new um, administrative assistant as well, Arissa Chatterjee. So um, tax preparation really kind of goes hand in hand with foreclosure prevention, which is why we offer these programs each year. Um, often, especially for older adults, um, tax returns are used to pay their property taxes in the upcoming year. And we utilize the tax clinics we offer and tax returns to screen for those who might qualify for what's known as a poverty exemption. Uh, poverty exemptions are uh, allow for a reduction in what they owe for property taxes. So each city or township has their own income li limits and requirements for an application. Um, pretty much all of them require to see some form of a tax return. And if they qualify, they can reduce the assessed value of their home, either 25, 50, this year they're introducing 75% or 100% exemption. And what that does is reduces their property taxes that they owe. So for example, if they received 100% exemption, they would have no property taxes due. Um, 
not every municipality even offers 100 percent it just sort of depends um, but all cities and townships have a board of review who reviews these applications and that um, review is done three times a year so they have three opportunities to submit the application in march um, july and december so we use the tax clinic to kind of grab those people and help them complete the application, send it in for them, you know, make copies of everything they need. Um, we can also work out some other options. So um, there's a payment deferment for property taxes. So it's income based, so they have to be under $40,000. Um, and then they have to either be a senior, which is 62 and up for deferment. Um, uh, disability also counts. Um, quadriplegic is another one, um, veteran. If you can check the under 40 and one of those other boxes, you can defer your property tax without fees or penalties um, to pay in April. So if we did it this year, if you deferred winter and summer, you wouldn't owe until April 30th of 2025. This just gives people some more time to kind of get the money together for those taxes. Um, we also use the tax clinics to spot potential delinquent taxes, people who are behind on their taxes. We work really closely with the Washtenaw County Treasurer Office um, in helping to make uh, payment plans. Um, I wanted to direct attention to these property tax credits through the state of Michigan because um, Housing Bureau for Seniors has a new program that we're offering this year that focuses solely on these two tax credits. Um, the first one is the Homestead property tax credit. Um, so these are really geared towards lower income brackets. So even people who have non-taxable income who may not normally file a tax return, um, such they just get social security or SSI, um, they are eligible for these tax credits. So the Homestead property tax credit um, is directly tied to income and how much property tax paid you paid during the previous year. Um, so there are income and taxable value limits of your property that change each year. So for this year, for 2023, rather $67,500 is the max income and the home taxable value limit is 154,000. So if your income's over that or your home is valued at more than that, you don't qualify. Um, the maximum refund you can get up to $1,700 this year. Last year was 1,600 um, years before that, it's been $1,500. So it's a, it's a good amount of money. Um, you're able to file this three years retroactively. We can go back to 2020 because there's no real deadline for these. Um, renters can also qualify for this credit if they live in a building that pays property taxes. So if the building's tax exempt, they don't qualify for this. Um, in general, based on what I've read about it, it's about 20 to 23% of rent paid. Um, they, they go towards property taxes. So renters are able to apply to try um, to get that back. Um, the second property tax credit is the home heating credit. Um, this is a credit that helps residents get money back for their heating bill. This is a, a pretty low income program um, through the state of Michigan. So if they qualify um, and they will either get a energy credit um, that looks like a check really, and they sign it and then they send it to DTE or consumers to be applied to their heating bill. If the heat costs are included in their rent, um, residents get a refund check sent directly to them. Um, the deadline for these every year is September 30th um, and there's the income limits there. So a one household income limit is $16,038. Two household member income limit is $21,692. Um, there are some additional exemptions um, that may cause that income limit to increase a little bit, um, such as a disability veterans, but it's a case-by-case -case basis. Um, an important thing to note that not everyone knows is that even smaller credits, so even something, anything over $20 um, can potentially lead to an increase in food benefits. Um, so we always encourage people who get the home heating credit, if they get over $20, um, to let their caseworker know as soon as they receive the benefit because um, if it affects it, they can start it right away. Um, they don't necessarily need to wait for a recertification is how I understand it. So again, I'm talking about these because there's a program we're offering that I'll talk about on a later slide to, that um, we can easily help people um, receive these credits. 
Um, so now I'm gonna get into the programs we're offering this year. All of them are free. Um, I just wanna make note that nobody on Housing Bureau for Senior Staff is a certified tax preparer. Um, we can't answer tax questions or offer tax advice. Um, people at, through the different programs can do that. Um, they're trained, um, but we really work to facilitate the scheduling and making sure everybody gets everything they need to be able to come get their taxes done. Um, so the first program we're offering, and if you're familiar with our tax programs, this is the one we've been offering, I don't even know how many years now, is through AARP Foundation Tax Aid. Um, and when I talk about tax season, I mean February through April. So our appointments start February 6th and end April 12th, um, all the way up to tax day. Um, they're a certified tax credit site for the elderly. Um, we're offering appointments Wednesdays and Fridays during tax season. And they do receive a full federal and full state return um, free of charge. There is no age or income limit for this. So even though we're Housing Bureau for Seniors, AARP does not turn anyone away. So we can take at any age or any income. There are some things that are out of scope, which means they're not able to prepare the returns if people have rental or farm income. They can only do Michigan state returns um, and they can't do non-alien returns. And if they're small business owners, they're unable to do those returns as well. And these appointments work where they come in um, at their time slot, they meet with a trained um, tax aid volunteer and they complete the full return. Um, so they do federal and state right there e-file it and appointments generally take an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on the return. Um, the second program we are offering this year is through United Way, their Scan and Go program. That does have an income limit. Um, it has to be less than 64,000 annual income. It's still a full federal and full state tax return. Um, during tax season, we're offering these appointments on Tuesdays and um, tax aid, the program I just spoke to, does not offer any um, tax returns out of tax season, but Scan and Go, um, if you can get connected with the volunteer, they do offer returns after tax season. Um, we often get people who maybe are behind on their tax returns for whatever reason, someone passes away, um, and so they can um, assist with that. They have some blackout periods, but overall you can um, get them done after April. These appointments are much shorter, generally about 30 minutes. Um, everybody brings in their tax documents, they're scanned and uploaded to the portal, and then the tax preparer kind of grabs the documents, prepares the return, and then the United Way preparer contacts them to schedule a time to review and sign. Um, I'm not sure if they're doing electronic signature this year, um, but they might be. And then, um, the property tax credit assistance, so those property tax credits I spoke to earlier, um, AARP Foundation has a new program called Property Tax Aid, and this works to get that homestead property tax credit and home heating credit um, only. So they're not full tax returns, it's just for people with lower income or just social security um, to get the tax credits they qualify for. So they've developed a training and a tool that makes it really, really simple. Um, I think a home heating credit maybe takes like 10 minutes to do. Um, and so again, this is for people who are not required to file a full return. And um, during tax season, we're offering this to folks on Wednesdays if they qualify, um, but HBS offers um, this assistance year round. Um, home heating clinics, we do go into apartment complexes in Washtenaw County. We're expanding into Wayne and Oakland and um, complete the home heating credit for residents there, um, you know, on site um, for those that can't make it to, you know, our office. Um, AARP Foundation is allowing us to do this over the phone too. So they are really simple. Um, and so we are able to do that over the phone for folks as well. And so this is just a summary slide of all the programs we're offering this year. So we have the tax aid with no income limit. Uh, Wednesdays at our office on South State Street and Fridays on Plymouth Road in Ann Arbor. Um, the scan and go is on Tuesdays during tax season at our office on South State Street. And then um, during tax season for the Michigan property tax credits, we're offering it Wednesdays at our office. Um, but it, again, it can be done year round with us. Um, everything is by appointment only. So that's my number to call to schedule. We ask a few questions to figure out which program is the best match. 
And then they get mailed an intake form they'll have to complete and a reminder of documents to make sure to bring to the appointment. And they show up and do the return. Um, it's important that they have all their documents ready. Um, otherwise, they won't complete it. They don't have everything. Um, and so I don't know if anyone has any questions, but this is our information again. So tax questions and appointments come to me at the 998-9341. And if you have any or anybody you work with has a, a senior, 55 and up, for other senior housing concerns, they can reach out to Desiree, who's our intake and resource coordinator, um, and her information is right there. Do we have any questions for Nicole? They can come through the chat. You can speak up, raise your hand, however you'd like to bring your question forward. Nicole, are the incomes based off a of gross income? Yeah, so it's based off of, um, yeah, it's based off their gross income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever they get from, you know, Social Security that says their income is what we put on the, the document for those tax credits. We have a question from Angela. Sorry, I can't see what? the chat. Did you see the chat too? No, I can't see the chat. Okay. Can, uh, can... Angela says, are asking, are income totals for household? Yes. Yeah, for the household or not income? Perfect. Or not not individual. Sorry. Okay. Versus individual. Just just a question. So the income. So are you talking about like the income limits for the um, different? Credits? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's household income. Yep. So combined, they would have to be at that or less. To qualify. D, I see you have a question. Yeah, you're saying you had a question. You had somebody you wanted a, a client that you wanted to reach out to uh, uh, HBS on behalf of HBS. Is that what I'm hearing here? Yeah, I had a client and I tried to reach out for tech to help me get to get assistance with the taxes like two or three times and we never got a call back. Okay, did you call recently or? Because right now we're um, we're turning calls within 48 business hours um, because we're getting, you know, 30 to 40 plus tax appointment calls a day. Um, but if you want to send me an email, I can look, you know, look to see if they got on our list or if there was somehow the message got dropped off, but we're logging the messages every day and then calling people back within two business days. Okay. So there, may, there may have been an issue, but yeah, just email me. That's easy right now. <laughs> so if you email okay. me, I can, I can reach back out to you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Are there any, uh, is this Dari or Pashto interpreters available for tax prep? Um, we... They do not have interpreters. We um, we often use like Google Translate, so we can help people of different languages. Um, a lot of times, people might bring someone with them. Uh, University of Michigan has interpreters. I, I'd have to look into if we, you know, if you let us know that we needed that, we might be able to get someone at the appointment if it um, if we know ahead of time. So that might be possible to get an interpreter because this is a University of Michigan Health program, and we can call and get interpreters. Do we have uh, any more questions? Are there any hands raised that I'm missing? If I am, just do a shout out. Okay, we have a question here from Renee. Uh, Janine, Janine, uh, the HBS, HBS tax program is for anyone, not just seniors. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, anybody can do these. Um, uh, any age, uh, AARP has no age or income limit. United Way has no age limit. Um, you know, if it's outside of tax season and you're going through us directly, like to do the property tax credits, we can still help um, others. But we, we, to get through, it's 55 and up. But yeah, for tax season, anybody. And we still have slots available, but they do fill up fast. So if anybody wants, you know, if you know of anybody who's interested, have them call.
Okay, well, we can also circle back if we have any more questions, um, but we'll go ahead and move on to our next presenter, uh, who's Dennis Dolby. Uh, if we wanna, Dennis, if you wanna go in and start sharing your screen. Um, he is from Accounting Aid Society. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, it looks okay. good. Okay, um, I'm Dennis Dolby. I'm with the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic at Accounting Aid Society. Um, Accounting Aid Society, from, from a tax standpoint, there's two major parts to what we do. Uh, the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic is one part. We also have the VITA tax prep as well. Um, we're open year round. And currently we have about 20 sites operating. Uh, we do operate year round and uh, several of our sites right now, probably five or six of them are open at least five days a week and usually one evening. So <clears throat> we have a lot going on uh, with the, the tax prep right now. Um, but my part is a little bit different. Let me see if I can, there we go, okay. So um, here's all of our contact information. Um, if anybody would want to schedule a tax appointment in Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, or Livingston, you can call the 313-556-1920 number and follow the prompts. And that will get you to uh, the tax prep appointments. Um, contact number for the clinic, the extension, and my extension is also on here, along with all of our uh, email contacts. So that's kind of our information of where we're at. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what is a low-income taxpayer clinic, uh, who's eligible to participate, and it, what exactly do we do? Um, one of the things is we're really not a tax prep service. Um, we're basically problem resolution. So we work on behalf of taxpayers who are low income. English is the second language. Um, the Accounting Aid Society has people on staff so we can handle Spanish and Arabic. Um, if they have a federal tax case, if they meet our income limitations, we provide pro bono representation. We also do education about the rights and responsibilities. Um, and we also advocate on issues uh, for taxpayers. Um, a lot of times we spent working on the earned income tax credit and also on the child tax credit over the last few years. We're, we're provided funds from the Internal Revenue Service. <clears throat> I know it says $100,000 a year on there. The, Last year and this year, they've upped it to 200,000. Um, where it will be going forward, we don't know yet, but uh, there's three different types of uh, low-income taxpayer clinics. Uh, there's our organization, which is a nonprofit. You have uh, some legal aid clinics. And here in Michigan, the legal aid clinic in Grand Rapids has a low-income taxpayer clinic. And then the other type is, is educational or academic. And in that case, we have one clinic at the University of Michigan and one at Michigan State University. So we're actually kind of lucky in Michigan to have four programs running um, to help people um, throughout the year. <clears throat> this is the 2023 income limits for our services. You can see uh, for a single individual, it's 36,450. Um, I'm did a little digging, and I think that's going to go up to about 37,600 uh, for this year. That hasn't been published yet. Another example would be a family of three will go up to 64,550 this year. So it's a kind of the more people, the more we can we can take in. Now, if somebody doesn't qualify for us to represent them based upon their income limits, we will also do a consultation with them on their, their issues. 
We'll spend time with them. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll give them some direction and try to help them. We can, what we can do at that point with them. So we we again do this without charge um, in front of the Internal Revenue Service. Um, audits, appeals, collection matters, some tax litigation work. Again, we're doing our education programs. And again, we're doing the advocacy, the work that we do. When it comes to audits of tax returns, there's correspondence audits, there's office audits, and there's field audits. Uh, many of those we work with, uh, probably a majority of the work we have in that area is going to be the correspondence audits, um, where people get a letter from IRS questioning what was on the return, and we can represent them before the IRS on those. After the audit is done, there's three different appeal levels. Um, they'll get a 30-day letter. Um, and then from there, you can request administrative appeals inside the IRS. If that doesn't work, it goes to a 90-day letter, which allows them then to petition the tax court. All of those avenues um, don't require a payment of the tax. Those all go um, without having to pay the tax until the case is resolved. Collection cases are generally broken down into three things, installment agreements, people that are currently non-collectible because they don't have income, and offers and compromise. Um, installment agreements, again, are gonna be based somewhat on a formula, some depending upon how much you owe would be based upon going through and analyzing your income and how much disposable income you would have. And I use that, that's their term that they use and you have to go through a whole process to make that determination. And then you'd arrange a monthly payment. The currently uncollectible is where we would analyze their situation if they have no current disposable income that they can pay on the taxes. IRS will put them in this currently uncollectible status. However, the assessment is still there. If they would get a refund on a subsequent tax return, that would be offset against the liability. So that doesn't go away. An offering compromise is you do a lot of the same collection work you come up with a lot of information for them, and then you're gonna make a proposal as to how much you're gonna to pay to settle the debt. If it's settled, and if they agree to it, you're gonna make that payment, but for the next five years, you're gonna end up having to file your returns on time and pay whatever you owe. Failure to meet those obligations in that five-year period will cause the offer and compromise to be voided and all the taxes that you settle will all come back as an assessment. So something you have to be very careful once it's arranged, you gotta keep up with it. Uh, we also work on liens and levies. A lot of those are settled in the same manner. Uh, let me just take a minute. Uh, a lien is where they're gonna tie up the title to property. A levy is where they're going to go to a third party to try to take money to pay off the tax debt. Uh, we work in both those cases. Um, again, in many of those things, you do have appeal rights within the Internal Revenue Service, and we can we we handle those for people as well. <clears throat> Unfiled tax returns sometimes will generate what's called a substitute for return. What that means is the IRS is going to file a return for you. And many times those come out a little bit higher than they should be. Um, so we can go in and prepare a return, submit that to the internal revenue and get the assessment corrected to the proper number. So that's just kind of general overview of some of the collection matters. Many of the IRS notices you have what they call a correction of error, where they've determined something is wrong on your return. 
and they go ahead and make the change. Um, they're making a lot of look through on the earned income credit, education credits. We saw a lot in the last few years on the recovery rebate credits. Um, so those are all some of the ones that we've seen in the last few years. Uh, you also have the underreporting. That's a the CP2000 notice where the IRS has reviewed their records, what people have submitted, and it doesn't match what's on your return. They're going to send you that notice. You take that notice. You look and see if, if it's right. You sign off on it and send it back to them. If you have any differences, you respond to the notice. And then you work through the that with the notice people. Um, again, you always have appeal rights from that. But one of the things you don't do after a CP2000 has been received, you don't file an amended return. That's the worst thing to do at that point um, because they won't, it'll go to a different department and the things won't match up. And so a lot of times we spend a lot of time trying to sort those out for people. That's a real quick run through of what we do. Um, we're busy year round. Uh, to give you a little idea, last year, uh, we secured 130000 in refunds for our clients, and we reduced tax liabilities by about 335000 for our clients last year. So, um, you know, we keep busy around here. And that's a staff of three of us with some volunteers. So, anybody have any questions? I can't see the chat, so if there's something there. Yes, I think we do have a couple of questions. Let me pull them up. Okay, so uh, can you remind us what counties um, did you uh, say you provide services for? For Vita, we're in Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, and Livingston. We have sites. Okay, so just outside. L for LITC, we'll cover the whole state. And we all trade back and forth with U of M or others. If there's something they can't handle, they, they've sent them to me. I've sent cases to them. So outstate stuff, if it comes into us, we just handle it. Great. I have another question. Uh, do either of these agencies have any resources for self-employed persons that needs free and low-cost accounting bookkeeping support? Um, are you saying either agency, as in the one that Nicole presented and then the one here that Dennis is prevent, uh, presenting for? Yes, that is that is correct. So the question we was, have we have a third is? department, and they they do some of that, but it's not free. The bookkeeping it's low cost, and you would have to check with them to see what their guidelines are and what they're doing. Generally, it's they're looking more current to keep people operating, um, but you can always check with them. That's called the Accounting Aid Academy. I don't have any resources for that, but that's good to know. The Accounting Aid Academy. Thanks. Okay, let's see, do we have another question? Anybody want to speak up? I'll raise, put it in the chat. So Dennis, I have a question because I often get people with more complicated tax issues um, than you know HBS can handle or that can be done through our programs we offer. So in terms of just questions about, for instance, I have a client, I'm concerned that past returns might affect her return now from filing jointly in the past. Is that something you guys kind of can assist and just offer sort of advice on how to proceed with tax returns going forward or? In some cases, yes, we can. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. So if that's it, um, there there'll definitely be um, an opportunity to capture uh, everybody's contact information. I'm going to share my screen now, uh, and we're going to do a quick overview of our Barry Buster funding. All right. 
Did that work out for everybody? Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, so here we go. Um, what we have in Barrier Busters, um, right now we've got about 19 or about 20,000 in our, um, the Washtenaw County government, the funding, the flexible funding pot. Um, this one has a lot of uh, flexibility. Um, so uh, go ahead and put in your request and this can be for utilities. It could be for car repair. Uh, remember for car repair, you're gonna want to check the member resource guide on the website uh, to make sure that you are grabbing all the documents that we're gonna wanna see. Um, for the auto um, requests. Um, Ipsy Township Fund, we have 19,000 there. Um, when we're working with that fund, uh, and this kind of goes for all of when you make a request, um, check the address, go to uh, the Map Washtenaw uh, website or like the link to it and then put in the address. Just get an idea, make sure that the uh, client you're working with is indeed in Washtenaw County um, and that the address has been given to you correctly. Sometimes there's typos in that and we find them on our reporting at the end. Um, so yep, go ahead, check out the map Washtenaw for that. Um, uh, for you to, uh, for the Ypsilanti Township Fund to make sure that they are in the township. Um, we also have the Ann Arbor Water Utility Assistance. That one's rolling uh, as long as they are a resident of Ann Arbor or the city of Ann Arbor for the water provider. Um, we have a relationship with them that we can um, uh, take care of those bills. Um, what's not listed on here that I want to mention is we have the uh, LIWAP, the Low Income Household uh, Water Program Assistance right now that is still active. Um, I've had it kind of under wraps and on pause for a short time. I've now opened it. So um, if you do have clients um, that need uh, water assistance, that uh, it can be Ann Arbor Water Provider too. Um, but for Ypsilanti, Saline area, anywhere in Washtenaw County, um, if they are one of our providers, uh, you can reach out to me, have your client um, go to the website, fill out the link uh, in the form there. Uh, but I am directly working with that program. So questions can go directly to me on the LIWAP program. That program will be open until March uh, 31st, uh, and then it will close. Um, and they'll be, we'll, so we're gonna, we have to see how much funding is left. We should have enough funding to last us until the end of March, but if that changes, we'll let you know. Uh, so right now we're okay with the LIWAP funds. Um, so yeah, that pretty much as what we have here listed on the bottom here, the funding is just something to know that our monthly allocations um, we're going to be applying. So uh, instead of putting a one giant lump sum of money available into the funding pots, we're going to divide it up to try to uh, pace it out throughout the uh, months to not use it all up at once, but to pace it out. Um, and so you'll see we're going to be putting 14500 for that county flexible fund. Uh, we're going to be putting that in each um, each month. And then the Ipsy Township, about 16000 17000 monthly will go there. Uh, so that's how we're going to try to keep the reserves available each month uh, and not try to uh, be dried up like we've been in the past where we don't have any funds available, which is really unfortunate. So um, if you have questions um, about Barrier Buster funding or any of your requests that you put in, um, definitely reach out to uh, the Barrier Buster staff um, email. Um, that's like dlbbstaff, uh, dot Washtenaw County, no, at WashtenawCounty.org. Uh, that will get you to one of us on the team uh, to answer your questions. Are there any questions for the funding that you might have right now that I can try and answer? Let's see, let me check. Anything in the chat? No? Anybody want to shout out a question? Are we good? How is Hawk doing with their, their funding? That's a good question. Um, I say that because um, I don't have any direct answer to that to say, yes, they're doing well. I think they're doing well. I think that is going. Um, I haven't looked at what is there, but as far as I know that it's an operation and everything's going. So I can't really say, I guess I don't really know too much. Uh, do you have more of a specific other than how they're doing that you're looking for? Oh, just was curious um, in terms of just housing in general. I think there's another person curious about that too in the chat, just discussions oh. about funding for housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are funding for housing that's getting going through. Yep. 
Gotcha. I see that, Kristen. Okay. So yeah, there are funding. So we have the funding there. And so all the housing requests, there shouldn't be uh, any hold up there at this time. There are funds available uh, for housing. So it's just a process of getting them all sent, getting those requests put through. Um, but there is availability at this time for that. Sorry, Stacy. can yeah. you clarify? So are you sharing that Hawk has additional funding? Because my just personal experience with employees um, has been more that they're put on waiting lists and they're not accessing funding. So I was hoping to be able to share something maybe from this meeting about, um, you know, funding in 2024. That's a good question. You know, I almost feel like I might need to get back to you on that uh, and check in with Moon um, about how he want, like what that is. All I know from what I've seen right now is that they do have funding. Um, how much funding exactly? I don't know that off the top of my head at the moment. Um, when you're saying the, I can't say I'm still limited in my experience of how the operations of Hawk is running right now. I hope to remedy that by learning more about how they do their intake and everything. Um, so right now I don't actually know, um, but my understanding is that I know that we, as I'm running through uh, Encompass requests, I am seeing Hawk uh, requests and housing requests and we are taking care of those. So hopefully that kind of helps. Uh, but yeah, I think we might want to check in with Moon and see how uh, what he has to say to that. Anything else I can try and answer? Oh, are we going back? Let's check the chat. So if someone requests assistance and funds are gone later in the month, does that person request uh, get moved to the following month. Yeah, I think it, right now we are where we're, we're saying put a, you know, hold and resubmit. So you might get that request back that there's no funds um, and then get it. Uh, that's my understanding right now. Um, and then you would reapply. Um, we're really hoping that we can pace out the, the amount that we have offered. We're trying to, you know, average and pace out. So we're really hoping that it is enough to get us through. Um, that is my understanding at this time. All right. And hopefully as, on a, just a personal note, as I stay in this role and progress in this role, I'll have a lot, I'll be able to answer, I think more uh, in the upcoming months to be able to speak to it more in detail. All right. I'm going to go ahead and um, get it. If we're all done with the questions and we're feeling good, I will go ahead and um, end our meeting. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Well, everyone have a good uh, rest of your day. And uh, we'll, if you did want to go back for some of these questions, like Kristen, uh, going back to the question to ask Moon, um, feel free to email um, at the BB staff email those specific housing questions on the funding, um, and then he'll, he'll respond. He, he should be able to get to you if I didn't give you enough of what you're looking for. Um, that would probably be the best way. That way I don't forget uh, to reach out to who, uh, who wants to know these, this information. Okay. All right. So everybody have a good day uh, and we'll see you back here next month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Have a great okay. week. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You're all welcome.